he's in Kentucky blue, but Mark Pope's got a bunch of guys, uh, 12 newcomers who have played at a lot of different spots. There's some gear in the closets from San Diego State, Oklahoma, BYU, A&M, Arkansas, Delaware, Wake, Drexel, Dayton. He goes on and on. Oklahoma State as well, West Virginia, Arizona uh, for Kirk Creasa. Jimmy, what all that means is that this is one of the most veteran teams Kentucky has seen in some time. Yeah, if not if not ever, when you can look at the you know almost 8,000 points that he brought in and almost 1,000 made threes or over 1,000 made threes. He knocked it out of the park in terms of identifying the kind of guys that fit his offensive system. You look at their the, the big guys right now, like Andrew Carr and Amari Williams. Those guys are good ball movers, Tom, from the perimeter. It's a five-out offense. They flood the floor with shooters. They move the ball quickly. Chris, you probably talked about already, they do a lot of practice sessions with 12 or 15 on the clock. They want to play fast and get shots off in a hurry. We get the three-point contest started with Travis Perry, all-time leading scorer in Kentucky history out of Eddyville, Kentucky. Population silver 2,500, and his jumper, well, Jimmy, it's wetter than Venture River Water Park. This guy is one of the best pure shooters we've seen. He's a high school valedictorian, and I believe this summer he made 100, 100 free throws made in a row three straight days. Uh, think about that. 100 straight free throws made in a row three straight days. That, that's a sign of the kid that's got a stroke, right? Seventh all-time scorer in United States High School basketball history. He made 712 threes, and that began when he started his varsity career as a seventh grader at Lyon County High School. Here's the one thing that's very obvious to me. Kentucky fans love their own. It has not mattered who the student athlete has been tonight. When that Kentucky yeah. a town has been named, these fans have gone crazy. Now Jackson Robinson, he's from Ada, Oklahoma. He started his career playing at Texas A&M, came out early to play at A&M, and then to Arkansas, 21 to 22. Just four starts with the Razorbacks after four starts with A&M, and blossomed once he got the Provo playing for Mark Pope in this offense. Yeah, Tom, he didn't get he did not get a lot of run at A&M in Arkansas, but he really took off under the Mark Pope system. Think about this: he's the first guy ever at BYU to be the leading scorer off the bench. Now, I don't know what his role is going to be this year for Kentucky. You could certainly start him. He's a prototypical NBA two guard at 6'6 that can really shoot it. But he's also very confident and comfortable coming off the bench as an offensive spark. Five pointer. Here's what's key to when you're bringing in so many new pieces from all over the country and you're a new staff, you need a glue person in the locker room. And that's what I hope Jackson Robinson is for this team. If they're going to be successful, he has to be. He has to basically say what Mark Pope is saying to this team. Explain it sometimes if they're not sure, but he's got to be Mark Pope's voice when Mark Pope is not around. Well, this is a team that will love to run, and Robinson is great in transition. He's great in the corner, but 1.3 points per possession when he shoots a three in transition, which is the second best in this current Kentucky roster. A 21-point opening round. Travis Perry had 25 in his opening round of this three-point contest. And now Trent Noah, who came in, his entrance was Brad Paisley's version of you'll never leave Harlan alive, and it was absolutely electric. He's from the deep, dark hills of eastern Kentucky where the sun comes up at 10 in the morning, goes down at 3 in the day. <laughs> You've been there, I take it. Well, he's also the number five all-time leading scorer in Kentucky high school basketball history. There have been some big-time scorers come out of this state. He made 19 made threes in the Kentucky State Tournament. That's a record. The, the previous record was held by a guy named Chris Lofton, so it's another guy that Mark Pope saw in the recruiting process, originally signed with South Carolina, but then when Mark Pope got hired, he said, I, I, I want out and I want to go home. And this is another big, a big two guard that can really shoot it with distance. Out of Harlan County High School, and he's got Kentucky blood. His grandpa, Perky Bryant, played football here back in the 60s. Trent 6'5", he's got some size. First threw down a dunk in eighth grade. Not just an elite shooter, but he can do that really well. He actually lost to Travis Perry in the Kentucky State Finals. Not that they ever bring that up between <laughs> each other. I would imagine not. So 
22 point first round for Trent Noah. The two finalists will advance to the final round. So right now it's Noah and Perry with the two best scores. And now Ansley Almanor. Almanor is a senior out of Spring Valley, New York. He's part of a team that knocked off Purdue in the NCAA tournament in 23, a 31 game starter last year. First team all Northeastern Conference. Tommy wasn't a kid that was, you know, like one of the top 10 guys in the portal. But again, Mark Pope studies the analytics, studies what this guy can do as a shooter. And he's a 6'7", 240-pound guy that shot 39% for his career as a three-point shooter. He made 93 last year at Fairleigh Dickinson. And you, you mentioned he's been on a team that has been in the NCAA tournament. They've knocked off a number one seed at Fairleigh Dickinson when he was there. And, I mean, this is a good get. I don't know if he's going to start or come off the bench. But he's kind of a unique matchup at 240 pounds with such a sweet stroke from that three-point line. That was a fairly Dickinson school record, 93 threes last year. And this team isn't full of a bunch of guys that have the green light. They have the nuclear green light. This is a five-pointer. <laughs> Almador has started off hot. But finish with 18. And now number 77, Kirk Creesa. Started his career at Arizona. Pardon me, Kobe Brea. Now that's Creesa. Well, Tom, you and I saw him in Arizona when he was a freshman. And this guy, I believe, is as important, Christy, as anyone that Mark Pope went and got because He's got a swagger, he's got a voice, he's got a confidence that just feeds that craft center every afternoon. He's not afraid to talk. He's a perimeter point guard that can really shoot the ball and can really pass the ball. And uh, when he came out to Beyonce, that that showed a little <laughs> bit of that confidence, I think, Christy. Any young man who's going to come out to put a ring on it <laughs> and dance to back it up, I'm a fan now. If you're not familiar with Kirk Kreese's game or his history after playing Jimmy, as you mentioned, at Arizona, then West Virginia, he is named after Steve Kerr. His dad, Vamo, was a professional basketball player in Estonia. That Arizona team was absolutely loaded with foreign-born players. That was a big part of uh, their recruiting process under Tommy Lloyd. Now he says, lighten it up again. We, talk, we talked about him, excuse me, as, as a shooter. He could really pass the ball. He led the Pac-12 back-to-back years in assists. And just a, he's a key piece. He's an older guy that's got an edge about him, plays the game a little spice. A clever risk taker defensively. I, I, I'm a big fan of Kirk Creasy. What would you think of his vision watching the practice? Oh, well, I think he is key because you can have shooters, but if you're not delivering that ball yeah. in the pocket, it's going to impact that. And I agree with everything Jimmy has said as far as the swagger and everything else, but you've got to have that court vision. And that's what I saw from him in practice. Here's Kobe Brea. If you round up by a half a point, he was a 50% shooter from three. Four years at Dayton, two-time Atlantic 10, sixth man of the year. And speaking of getting it up when you're getting down the floor, one and a half points per possession in transition threes. One point possession per possession is good. One and a half is elite. Tom, he was considered the best shooter in the portal this year. I mean, like you said, a 50% three-point shooter at Dayton. And when he put his name in the portal, Kentucky, Duke, Kansas, North Carolina, UConn, they, they all had an interest in number four. He's 6'7", can really shoot it. And when he finds his spot in this Kentucky system and lineup, he's a valuable, valuable guy. He moves the ball, but... His ability as a 6'7 guy to make guarded threes, and sometimes you have to make him in a league as athletic as the SEC. That 6'7 link, Chris, he really helps him out. I think the bottom line is if you're a shooter, you're a shooter, and it's going to come around. So yeah. I do think it's a matter of him getting comfortable in this system, but I expect a big year from him. I don't get to work with you very often, but i got to tell you, you are great at the tees. Yes, i got to be good at one thing. Yeah, but half the tees never come true. <laughs> but we don't know that yet. You don't, you don't know. <laughs> Three, Here's Trent Noah. Two, one, I think Jimmy, you know, following his recruitment, when he decommitted from South Carolina, it took a while to figure out 
officially that he would end up here with the Cats, but it, it just kind of seemed to make a lot of sense when that opportunity was in front of him. Well, he's a home homegrown kid that can shoot the ball, and there's always a place for guys like that eventually at the University of Kentucky if he hangs in there. Good size, confident in what he can do. And Mark Pope two weeks ago when I was up here at practice, stop, stop practice, he said, we are not normal. We play different. Embrace that. And you'll get taken out of a game for not taking a three-point shot under Mark Pope. And he's just constantly feeding confidence to his shooters. Trent Noah is a four-star recruit, scored 3,700 points during his high school career at Harlan County High School. And he wants some room in that corner. Refuse to give in to a miss is what Mark Pope tells his guys. Just keep shooting. What a finish for Trent Noah. He wears number nine because he wants to bring the ninth national championship to the Bluegrass. And he pours in 26 points in a championship round. We got one contestant left. You mentioned Mark Pope in practice. I, something I noticed yesterday is he is such a great communicator and it's not just what he says it's how he says it and when a player does something that he likes he stops practice he'll come in from midcourt and put his hand on his chest or his shoulder say yes the way you did that is exactly how we yep. want you to do it i'm so proud of you and it could barely be heard over a whisper but it's that interpersonal one-on-one -on -one communication as travis perry tries to shoot for a trophy listen jimmy's watched a lot more of the practice than i have but i was ready to play for mark pope sitting in there yesterday and I don't know everything about men's basketball but I know coaching and Mark Pope is a teacher and that is what good coaches are and I asked someone yesterday as soon as I got here I said hey is the hype real because I've read a lot in preparation about Mark Pope and who he is as a coach and to every staff member that I talked to they said it's not a show it is genuine this is exactly who this man is and we're very appreciative that he is our head coach Barry's got to get to 26. A five-pointer will help. He's at 20 right now. 22. And that one goes for two. He's got 24 and each two for the tie. Three for the win. One more for the win. And one more for good measure. Nearly took a victory lap. What a round. These guys have done battle in San Arena before. That's when they were high schoolers. And now Travis Perry wins the three-point contest tonight at Big Blue Madness. Just another number 11 in a long line of number 11s that can really shoot the ball. I need a list. <laughs> Jimmy Dykes. <laughs> in, in the and list. Travis Perry. <laughs> a couple of Kentucky boys. That was fun. That was fun. I, I had a solid score, but when I have this guy shooting behind me, I don't really have a chance. So, <laughs> three-point contest champion Travis Perry. Introduced by Trent Noah. That's a lot of Kentucky in the finals. Oh. Watch the top, Travis. <laughs> A couple of pure shooters. Tom, I said during the women's competition, if you can shoot the ball on an isolated stage in front of 23,000, you can shoot the ball in the game. That, that, that transfers to game situation. Second.